that can't get the lift under the car without blocking it. So we got it up on the on the on the jacks, frame jacks. And we're gonna do some brakes. Wheels are mounted, wheels and tire or tires are mounted on the wheels, TPMS sensors are set up. We should be good to go. So we got the wheels off, getting the spacers off. So these are the back rotors? Yep. These are our lugs. These are our really fancy center caps. Pads. Rear pads. Rear, rear lines. lines. Yep. So we'll start with the rear so I can get the calipers off so you can um, give them a coat and they'll have a chance to cure. Okay. Yeah, so we're going to be upgrading the rubber line, the rubber brake line, stainless. And then I'm going to be pulling these off. So we can give them a quick, uh, quick spraying, some black paint. In there, um, as much as possible. So because we flush. I, I don't want to induce too much air into this. Yeah, system. gotcha. So, so we'll. Actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to end up disconnecting this line and then putting a little rubber plug on the end of it. Mm, just okay. Let it sit. So. And then you, then you'll, then you'll just bleed through new right, what, yeah, fluid. Then what, then what I do is I start at the master cylinder and I'll suck the master cylinder dry till it's just down to the bottom. Yep. And then fill it with fluid. Yep. And then start my flush at that point. So. Okay. Rather than having all kinds of air that yep. you have to flush a gallon of yep. brake fluid through. Yep. Here's the new stop deck slotted rotor versus the OE rotor. And our stainless lines and then spill pad. It's be my first nice set of tool. You actually pinch the brake line so the fluid can't come out. Oh, cool. <laughs> Second time anyway. So. Do I need to bed these things when, um, I, when I... I bed all of my brakes. And the procedure I use, and I can get it done around the shop, is I do, do three stops. The, you go zero to 30, do an aggressive stop, not, not activating the ABS, but close, mm -hmm. down to five miles an hour to three miles an hour, and then let off the brake, and then roll for a bit, accelerate to 40, do that a second time, almost aggressive stop, almost to a stop, but not and then bring it up to 60 miles an hour. And then again, aggressive stop, not to a stop, and then drive it as long as you can without being aggressive on the brakes at all. I bring yeah. it back to the shop and let it cool it, off. And then yeah. let, let it sit for 10, 15 minutes, and basically the pads are better. Obviously don't pull the e-brake or anything like exactly, that, right? Exactly, yeah, no e-brake whatsoever. That makes sense. So we got what, two, two 12 mils on the back of this? Yep. And that's about it, right? Is that e -brake? Oh, the e-brake cables right here, right, and, that, and that's, that's why whole, aftermarket yeah. brakes or yeah. aftermarket rear calipers are such a pain. Well, I think Willwood has one, but it's some hybrid modification. It just doesn't doesn't work. Doesn't work for me anyway. So, e pads. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, he had aftermarket brakes on the car, so. So, your little set screws. Yeah, that's how you can tell that they uh, had aftermarket brakes on it before, because normally those have to get <laughs> tapped out. Well, I guess that means we can reuse them then. Yeah. 
so there's a difference in our slotted OE. This makes me want to get out the detail brushes. So this is where the stainless line is going to replace that. That's our e-brake cable. And we got our separate pieces we're going to tape up or uh, paint up. factory line versus our stainless line. Just doing a quick coat of black on our calipers. Let's clean them up. There's our Stop Tech OE replacement rotor. We got our calipers painted. And put the stainless steel lines on, put the new pads on, and we're good to go. In the rear, anyway. But you got new shims, right? Yeah, they don't, they don't want to stay in too tight. Right. Just do those after. That looks clean. Yeah, it does. At least for this, the, the two months, or if we're lucky, two minutes this, this black paint stays on there. Alright, so we've got the, this is the caliper shoe. I may have just made that up. You got new pads. And he's got a, use a, you know, a fancier version of a C-clamp. This is the shortcut way to use the tool. If you, if you, your, your, your pistons are all the way out, and you have to yep. go in the whole distance, then this is usually on there. Mm -hmm. You, use both you gotta these crank on it, yep. But we only have to go a little bit, and since these are so new, mm -hmm. if I just put this on there and turn it, it's going to go in right. You can put this cover on after the fact. Yep. Yeah, because I took it, I, that was, that oh, was the, the other easier side, way yeah. to do it, yeah. So we'll get this wow. on, then we'll put the brake line on. It looks so much better. Black, clean. It's going to suck when it squeaks crazy. I'm going to be able to stop. The, the brakes are now going to match the, uh, the power. Not, not necessarily the rear, but the front. The rear is more for show than anything. The rear does about 20% of the stuff. Yeah. But I mean, the factory rears are more than adequate. Yeah. But you did put the vent on, it's a little cool. Though. For all that all that um, high performance braking I'm doing, driving, yeah, to, exactly. uh, driving to Publix. <laughs> So you just two new washers. That side. Oh yeah, it's brake fluid that ruins everything, right? Not brake fluid cleaning. That stuff eats through everything, doesn't it? Yeah. Man, I've never had stainless lines before. I'm so excited. Oh, really? Yep, never had them. I, think, I don't even think, I don't think my GT3 has stainless lines. Um, I'm sure it does. So our stainless line going from here into the metal lines that run throughout the car over them while you're immersing the trap but we're doing this for the good of the, the don't world don't understand the good of the, the good of the car community okay. nice that looks so so clean yep. 
nifty picture in there of the. Yeah, so that's how we got it all clean. He's gonna put the cover back on the e brake. And the left side's done, left side rear, anyway, is done. All right, time for the front ones. So this one's a little different in that we don't have to disconnect all the line. Oh, we're gonna disconnect the line, but we don't have to disconnect it from the caliper. Because we're gonna take the whole caliper off because we have a whole new caliper, whole new lines this time. You cap this off the same as the rear? Yep. Clip. So that's a little clamp that seals off the brake line. Disconnect the other parts of the brake line. Brake line's out. Caliper's out. Yes. Here's our. There's our difference. Now we're missing the. It's still. The what? Yeah, I mean. So, yay big. Yay big. Quite a difference. So, a single piston versus four piston. Oh, here's our pad difference as well. Look at that. Twenty millimeter versus a uh, two something. So now we have to remove the dust shield because it doesn't fit with the with the, the way the hat and the way that it sits. So there's three. Oops. There are three Phillips have to be removed in order to make it work. And in fairness here, we already did the other side, so we're making it look easy. On AP ones, you actually have to cut this because it's connected. Then on AP two, or and yeah, so, somebody may yeah, it was already cut, wasn't yep, it? Somebody may have already cut it. Yeah, it looks like. I don't know. It looks pretty clean there. But you're right. On that AP doesn't one, look it, cut. It, yeah. Yeah, it connected. Might be. Actually, is he? It. Was it? There's yeah. A bird there. Yeah, so because he had uh, Brembo's on this, the guy who owned it before me. Oh, okay. The guy that conveniently left out the car was highly modified. <laughs> Which I don't really care, but made it easier for us. But the guys that put it back together did a good job. Yes, Goes to show how you you can take a car, you can modify a car, especially with bolt-ons like this, and then put it back together, and make it OEM like. 
if you know what you're doing. See, there's quite a bit more room here. These set screws don't really do anything, but we got them, so we're putting them back in. They're not necessary. No, rotor side. Oh yeah, yeah, it's gonna go on the inside of it. Oh, you put the rotor on. You have to put the bracket on first. We reuse the OE bolts. These are tightened down to 40 foot pounds. No, not these ones. These oh yeah, yeah, yeah. These are like 70 or 80 or something like that. Right, that bracket does fit inside the hat of the rotor. It's a pretty clean install. How that goes on there. stainless line and we're done. I like this. Didn't think for sure we were gonna get any of this done. Now still got a long way to go but there's a new stainless line. I guess I should call it a braided line, right? Washer on both. So you know which calipers left and right because of where the the bleed lines are at the top. there are two attachment points and then those brackets and mounts they slide on the line 
see. <laughs> I haven't. That's the last thing I filled it pretty quick. Oh, yeah, I didn't think about that. There's nothing in that line. Yep, or in the caliper, so it filled up half the caliper. Right yeah. Too. Hmm. There's our. So how does this work? This is a, this is a vacuum. It's actually sucking great. It's, it's totally vacuum. Okay. So I'm just doing the preliminary to get some because we didn't the gravity bled the back. Right. And we didn't do anything with the front, so I'm just gonna kiss the front to get fluid coming from through. At the same time, watching the master cylinder till it's just about empty. Right. And then we'll add the new fluid and then start a proper brake flow. Gotcha. Okay. I'm gonna stop saying gotcha. I hate hearing that back when I hear it over and over and over again. So these have two separate... Yep, inside and outside. Huh. It's old so you can't see it going through the hose, but because I can see it moving, I know it's slow. Alright, so we just back the lead, pull the air out, and suck up the rest of it. All right, so you bled all the, all the vacuum bled all, and now you add some, yep. some mo tool. Popped it off. Just hop in. Okay. This is how I do it. I put the brake hose in. All right. Just crack the bleeder screw, and till we go around the first time, all you're gonna do is sit there and slowly pump the brake. All right. As long as this stays submerged in brake fluid, yeah. Air does not get back up in. So hmm. the typical way to do it is you pump three times and then crack the bleeder screw. Right. and then close it, and then you, you do that. We'll do that at the very end once, but as long as the, the brake line stays submerged in brake fluid, right. you can just sit there and pump the brake with the bleeder screw closed until you see no bubbles coming out of it. Right. And then you know you've gotten all the air. Right. So that's what we're gonna do this time. We're gonna go around once. You know, we'll probably fill this up twice. But right. we're gonna go around once and do that, and then the final, we'll do the, the three, three pumps and then crack it open. Gotcha. And that should be it. The key here, right, is to make sure that never runs out, right? Never runs dry, correct. Because then we'll be just sucking air into the yep, line. Yep, then you're just starting from the beginning again. Yep, all right, so he has me pumping. So you go, you do it once, get all the main air out, get all the old fluid out, right? Yep, because now, now, now all that's coming out is new fluid. So then, what's the purpose of doing it again? Just the way that you did it, what, the way we're gonna do it now is, um, you're gonna pump it three times and hold your foot on the brake. Okay. And then you're gonna say hold to me, and yeah. I'm gonna crack the bleeder screw, keep pressure on the pedal, uh -huh. the pedal's gonna go to the floor. When you get to the bottom, say bottom, but hold it All right. until I say release. All right. And then that's the cycle. We're gonna do that twice to each, twice huh. to each bleeder screw, and there's two bleeder screws on each one of the front. Hold. Floor. Hold. Floor. You top off the yep, brake actually, fluid. You know, it's already actually just a... Where is Max on the... Is it that line or... All right, so we're gonna come up. I'm gonna start with five turns and see what happens. There's one. Let's 
so much easier than sitting on your back when I normally am doing it. <laughs> sitting on my Two. butt. You know, let's do four. I'll be honest with you. Look at what the difference was right there. Look yeah. At the yeah. You want to start with three and see what happens? Yeah. Okay. Well, maybe it will. Maybe this will be the what makes me keep this thing because that looks sick. <laughs> oh man, so sick. I didn't get pictures after on it. What do you think? They know how to do this right. <laughs> yep. Yeah. This is pretty sick. Yeah, it is. These are all my, all my uh, early 20s JDM dreams being realized here right now. <laughs> Big brake kit, titanium lugs. These aren't, these aren't fake titanium lugs. These are real titanium. They're not just burnt steel. <laughs> Painted, but just even like this connection here with a nice black you know, nice black powder coated rotors, and black calipers, it's clean. It's on stilts. What? I said it should be sitting all over now. We only turned it up three turns. Uh, uh. It's already sitting a little. Realistically, the front should come back down. Yeah, I mean, I mean you, you think? So this is the part where we're going to test drive and the rotor hits the uh, end of the, whatever, the control arm and this is where I want to quit. All right, long, all right, long day. Uh, we ran out of time. I'm going home empty-handed. Uh, the lower ball, the lower ball joint, is still rubbing on the uh, on the on the on the rotor. And so I don't know what's up with that. I have to do a little research. I don't know why it's doing that. I thought that these were pretty pretty simple. It's the one thing I didn't think would happen. I think everything else, everything was good. You know, everything else was good, the wheels, the fit, everything was perfect. So Bill's gonna work on that and work on aligning tomorrow and uh, and then I'll try to you know get it in the next day or two. So anyway, end of the uh, end of the vlog of me uh, jerking around with the S2000 today and we'll, we'll get it and do some more driving stuff here soon. So what happens when the, when the force pulls you back, your foot naturally comes off the gas. You have to keep your foot to the floor. Oh,